So last week, uh, we got an email submitted at the website. And uh, we have this gentleman on the line right now, but I'm going to read the email first. It says, I live near Albuquerque and I drive a truck to Las Cruces four days a week, Tuesday through Friday. I usually catch the first couple of hours of the show before losing the signal heading back north. Sometimes I'll listen live on my phone if the conversation is compelling. I'd like to chat with Brandon about the recent George Floyd events. He's made some very interesting comments that have made me rethink my views, especially this morning, which would have been back on uh, 6-5. I'm 60, white, married with two grown children. I suppose that's pertinent to the conversation. My views on the whole Black Lives Matter issue has undergone some serious overhaul in the last few days. I look forward to your reply. Well, now we are replying, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Are you uh, on the road today or are you, uh, do you have the day off? I am on the road today. I'm currently in Las Cruces, but uh, I'm parked, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Uh, so just give me a quick rundown because I, I had, had had this email forwarded to me um, from our boss, and I was trying to think of what I could have possibly said that would have would have sparked your email, and I, I honestly couldn't think of anything. So what was it specifically um, that kind of started you on this path? Well, there was a couple of things uh, that we mentioned over the, the last week on the show. Uh, one of them was probably one that you don't even remember, but you were talking about a cartoon that you could see where someone was saying, uh, oh, I've broken my leg, I've broken my leg, and then someone else was saying, well, yeah. Well, oh, what about my leg? leg? Yes, okay. Right. And that got me to kind of thinking a little bit. And uh, as I say, I, I drive back and forth to Albuquerque four days a week. So I've got about seven and a half hours by myself in a truck every day. And I have a lot of time to do some thinking. Then I believe it was either the next day or it might have even been the, the previous day where you had the uh, the lady that you played the uh, uh, white privilege test, I believe it was. Oh, yeah. And uh, where, where, you know, you were supposed to answer yes or no to the questions. Mm-hmm. So I was listening along to that, and I... I think I only put up one or two fingers, and that got me to thinking a lot about certain things. And I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've, I have I grew up in a family where my parents made sure that uh, my brother and I were, were very, uh, I guess, very, very, very accepting of everyone, regardless mm-hmm. of skin color or anything like that. Uh, my, my parents were, were hard scrabble farmers. They didn't have anything handed to them. And... They made sure, though, that, that we knew that everyone was important, regardless of, of, of any difference that they may have with us. Before mm-hmm. I grew up, there were not a lot of African Americans. And so, quite honestly, until I got into my late teens and early 20s, I was not around a whole lot of African Americans growing up in Albuquerque. Of course, I was around a lot of Hispanics, so it's not like I wasn't around people who were different than me as far as skin color goes. Mm-hmm. But uh, when the whole Black Lives Matter thing started several years ago, And I started hearing the term white privilege. It kind of frustrated me a little bit because to me at that point, what white privilege meant was that as a white person, I had a lot of things handed to me and nothing could have been further from the truth because everything that I have and have my wife and I have worked for in life, we've had to work for very hard Mm -hmm. and we're, we're doing okay. I mean, we're in fact, we're doing pretty well, but, but it it just kind of frustrated me because every time I was here white privilege, I would think, well, you've had stuff handed to you. You know, you had all of these opportunities handed to you that, that, that nobody else got, and quite frankly, I didn't see me as having those opportunities. We, we worked for everything. But then when you mentioned the thing about the leg, and then also as I go back to Albuquerque, as I said, I pick up other stations, and, and one of the stations that I will listen to from time to time is Jim Rowe. And he also had a similar thing on there about um, if someone comes to you and says, I'm working to find a cure for cancer, is your response, yes, I'll help you, or well, wait a minute, what about the other diseases that are killing people? And I got to thinking about that, and I thought, you know, when I couldn't answer yes to more than a couple of those questions on the on the Black Lives Matter or the white privilege, I guess it was, the white privilege test, it got me to thinking. And I thought, you know, I've never felt threatened when I've been stopped by a police officer, uh, other than the fact that I didn't want to get a ticket. And believe me, I've, I've been stopped a lot of times. Um, well, I, you, you drive. <laughs> like you just, exactly. you, it's the sheer amount of time you're on the road is immediately going to up those odds, no, ma- exactly. no matter what you're doing. Exactly. Now, that's not to say that when I pull up to a, to a DOT checkpoint that my heart doesn't start to beat a little faster, but that's just because I don't want to get a ticket. Yeah. Um, but, but I've never once 
in, in all the times I've been stopped, I've never once feared for my life. I never once uh, thought that I was going to make it out of there with anything but, but alive. Um, and I never once had anybody, you know, cross the street to avoid being close to me, at least not that I'm aware of, or, or getting out of the elevator, anything like that. So it really got me to think about, you know, maybe I have been looking at this thing wrong. Maybe I really have been uh, not seeing this correctly. And then to tie the whole thing into the Colin Kaepernick deal, um, I'm an avid football fan. I love to watch the NFL like I think most people do. And when I first saw Kaepernick taking a knee, that was an insult to me because my father uh, was in the Marine Corps. I've had many family members who, who have served, and I thought, well, that's an insult to them. That's, that, how, how dare you do something like that? Mm-hmm. But as I thought about it more and read a little more and learned more about it over these past few days, because I've had a real epiphany in these last, in these last few days, here, um, and it's kind of shook my world up a little bit. But as, I, as I've learned about Kaepernick and what he was doing, I thought, you know, I can understand why he's doing what he's doing. So I, it, it's it's <laughs> for someone who considers themselves enlightened, which I believe I am. I mean, I've, I've been in a supervisory position uh, in other you know the jobs years back in the construction business, and I've never once hired a person based on anything other than ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never once I never once looked at skin color or anything like that. But still, um, this has been this has kind of shook up my world a little bit. And um, I, I guess what I wanted to say to you is thank you, first of all. I mean, uh, sometimes you may not realize this, but the littlest things that you say can affect someone. Um, I mean, a, a simple little thing about a cartoon that you saw was really what kind of turned the light switch on, or at least started to turn the, the dimmer up for me. And uh, my wife and I over the weekend have had discussions about this, and, and she has, has who felt a lot the same way I did. She's, she's come to see what I'm dealing with, and my brother as well, my older brother as well, he and I have had discussions on this, and, and it's really, it's as, as I told my wife the other day, I said, it's it's kind of shaken me up a little bit, not for bad or anything like that, just, just the fact that it's kind of turned my world upside down a little bit, and, and now I can understand what everyone is upset about. Um, and it, it, I guess, you know, for, for lack of anything else, it's just given me a whole new outlook on, on the whole situation, and now I can understand why protesters are doing what they do, with the exception of the, of the burning and the looting. But, well, I th- uh, yeah, I think we have to, we do have to establish that there's a difference between protesting and rioting. I, I, like, I think that that's a big stipulation that, that we need to be able to lock in on and say these two things are not one in the same and you can't look at them as one in the same but i want to go back to what you were talking about when you're in regards to privilege um because i I do believe there's a lot of people out there who have that mentality and it, it would be you know white people who when you hear white privilege it can there are people out there who think that that somehow diminishes the work ethic that they have and it, right it, on the head. That's, it, exactly, that's exactly what I felt. And it, and it means that whatever you have, you didn't work for. You didn't bust your butt. You weren't waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, putting in a 12-hour day, going to school and working at the same time, or doing all of these things that you have done that, that truly have to do with work ethic. And to, that, that the claim of white privilege, I think, there's too many people out there that immediately shut it down because that's what they think that it means. They immediately believe, oh, well, you're poo-pooing everything that I've worked for in my life. That's not the case. You've, you've well, worked hard, but yeah, you're you have absolutely, to. You're absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right. And excuse me, there, you're absolutely right because that's exactly how I felt. I thought, I, you know, as, a, as I've already mentioned, I don't want to be here, but that's, you know, we've, we've had nothing handed to us as a family, and, and we worked very hard. And, and to hear someone say, well, you, it's all white privilege, and I'm thinking, I didn't have a thing handed to me. You know, there, there's been no privilege to it. I mean, as, as I always joke about it, uh, it, it's true, but there was a period of time in, in my life when I was a teenager when for a brief period of time, we didn't have a home. And so, you know, I'm thinking about that. I think, how, how could that be privilege? But, I mean, through my parents' hard work, we, of course, rectified that situation rather quickly. But uh, it, it, but you're, you hit the nail on the head. I guess is what I should say. You hit it right on the head. Well, I, I think that I've and I, I've said this multiple times on the show is that everybody has their own unique experiences. Like Lisa, right. Lisa's life is completely different from mine. Joanna's life is completely different from ours. Joe, your life is completely different from everybody else's as well. And I have had the fortunate ability 
of, of certain privileges in life. I didn't grow up rich. We didn't have money when I was a kid, though, but I had a very loving family. Um, oh. I had a dad that worked very hard. He earned his degree later on in life, and now he does very well for himself. And I've had that, that, that is a specific advantage that I have had in life. And that may not even come down necessarily to race. That just comes right. down to a specific advantage because of who my family is. But to completely yeah. shut that argument down because you feel that it's doing a disservice to your work ethic is a, is a hurdle I think a lot of people need need to get over. And I think that people who claim white privilege as well also need to look at that aspect of it and realize there is hard work being put in. But it's, it's again, what makes it difficult is you do have to look at it from all sides and you can't shut down from any direction. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Oh, exactly. You're, you're, you're exactly right. And as I say, this is what's been a little difficult for me because I've always considered myself uh, a fairly enlightened person. Again, uh, and you talk about life experiences. I mean, just for the record, my, my wife grew up in Brooklyn. Um, so she has a completely different life experience for me. I mean, she grew up in the, in the inner city, and some of the things that she has mentioned to me seem completely foreign. Um, so it's, yeah, you're absolutely right with life experiences, but I, 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 I maybe the label white privilege is, is what really I was hung up on, but, mm -hmm. um, basically the whole purpose of my, my email to you is just to say, sometimes I know you're on the radio five days a week or how, however often it is, and, and sometimes you may just be saying something in passing and not even realize what kind of effect it has on someone. And I just wanted to let you know that that actually did have a huge effect on me. Well, I appreciate that, Joe, and that's one of like, and and I appreciate that specifically because we're we're working towards the positive. We talked about this yesterday on the air when we were talking about change, and I'm really glad that you were talking about that as well. How your your thought process kind of being shooken up a little bit, and not necessarily in a bad way, but things being shaken up can still be a bit scary to people oh, because it's it's breaking from the norm. It's breaking from what you know and what is comfortable. So the fact that you're willing to embrace that, I commend you greatly for being able to hear something about a, a, a very heavy topic, but also having the ability to look at it from a different side and being open to it. Because I think far too frequently we hear people complaining or people, people saying something of, to the effect of, well, you need to go into it with an open mind, but I'd be willing to bet they're not. To them, an open mind is I'm just going to have my points of view ready to go to defend what you're against what you're going to say. That's why I think exactly. debates can be very difficult because if you're going into a debate trying to win your side, you're not solving a problem. No. The way to solve the problem is to realize, okay, well, this person it, they're going through this, or they see it from this side. I see it from this other side. Now we need to discuss and find a middle ground. It's not, tell me what you think so I can tell you how you're wrong. And I think right. that's what gets missed so frequently these days. So I commend you very much, Joe, for uh, reaching out and letting us know and then also having a, a different kind of spin on things now um, and, and able to look at things a little bit differently. Well, yeah, and, you know, uh, my... As I mentioned, I'm 60 years old, so in a lot of ways, I'm I'm set in my ways. So uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's been. It's, I mean, I I have I have two children who are the same age as uh, as uh, Joanna and Lisa there, so you know that that'll give you a little perspective. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I, I just it, it's it's as I, as I told my wife, it's been a little difficult right now, but uh, it's kind of a strange experience, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work through it and we'll, we'll make it, we'll make it better. Yeah. And it's interesting when you sent that email last week, my, um, my, my own, the, the own negative part of my brain, uh, since you didn't specify exactly what it was, the negative part of my brain immediately went to this guy was already probably a, a, a cool, calm, normal dude. And I somehow turned him racist or it's like I am my, my, my negative at the negative aspect of my brain immediately went to that. I'm like, I'm going to put this guy on the air. And now all of a sudden he's going to tell me how I, I, I like he's ready to join the KKK. And like, and it was just this really dark path that my brain went down. So no, I'm really glad that's not what happened, Joe. That's, that's definitely not what happened. No, I mean, uh, no, I, I, no don't, don't worry about that. But I, 
and, and as, I, as I mentioned in, in subsequent emails when we traded back and forth there, um, and you uh, said that you wanted to put me on the air, I'm thinking, well, that's not really what I was looking for. I was kind of looking for like a little email chat back and forth, but I thought, what the heck, we'll uh, we'll give it a shot here. Uh, so, so there you go. Well, thank you for reaching out, Joe. I definitely appreciate it. Keep in touch, man, and make sure you. So you're headed. You're in Cruces now. You head right back to Albuquerque when you're done. I'm okay. I'm heading back to Albuquerque as soon as I get off off the air with you. All right. Well, make sure you drive safe and definitely keep in touch, Joe. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. Mm-hmm, bye. Bye. Well, so there's Joe. I was legitimately concerned yeah. that I somehow turned him racist. <laughs> like that was the first thought no, that this popped into my head. Fired on me. Yeah, I was like, "Oh man, I said something." But no, I, 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 I commend him very much for for reaching out and calling in because um, when when I reached back to him and I said, "Hey, you know, would you want to come on the air?" He was like, "Well, that's not really what I was looking for, but I guess uh, if need be."